Hello and welcome to the sideboard here at the StarCityGames.com Columbus Invitational, part of the SCG Tour. I'm Nick Miller, I'm excited. Michael Majors, how are you doing? Great, how are you? Pretty good. You've got a white-green deck here, the human variety. Yeah, I, I'm, I'm being a little creative this weekend, but not terribly creative. Um, obviously, last weekend at the uh, SCG Tour stop in Baltimore, we saw a huge uh, influx and success of humans. Uh, Mono-white got second place, there's blue-white. Um, there's a small scattering of like white splashing green for mm -hmm. like tireless tracker. And I guess if you want to say that I'm, I'm kind of working from that shell, then that's a reasonable thing to say. Right. Humans was a massive amount of the metagame last week. And mm -hmm. you said there were three varieties. So why did you choose to go with the green splash instead of the blue splash or just going mono white? Okay. So I thought that the way that people would respond to the huge success of the human decks would be to move towards cards like maybe like Radiant Flames, Coslex Return, Ramp, uh, Languish, just a variety of sweepers. People are probably going to get a little bit leaner, play cheap removal, play sweepers, be able to interact with your one ins and two drops. Um, a, a big part of the reason why the Humans deck is so powerful is it can play two or three spells in the first two turns, uh, especially with like Thalia's Lieutenant. Go wide, get the board uh, very powerful, your, your creatures get large, and if you can kind of Chip shot the the humans away with you know maybe like dead weight ultimate price uh, declaration in stone cheap removal, then the uh, the cards get a little bit weaker and so I wanted to kind of respond to the fact that people would be a little bit more interactive play better removal and uh, incorporate some more grindy elements in my deck. Right, you don't have the super fast start like we saw in Amount of White that had like five or six different one drops. Yep. You have a you have three in the one drop slots from Kithian, Thraben Inspector, and then the Gossip Monger which can flip into the Rabble. So you're kind of going bigger, and you want to have access to cards like Dromoka's Command, a mm -hmm. card that a lot of the humans decks don't have as a way to be more aggressive and take out other creatures. Yep, uh, Dromoka's Command is even an, a nice nod to the mirror because uh, a lot of people... So, so the mirror is, is, is all about sizing. Uh, if you have larger creatures in play, especially First Strikers and either way to work in Constance Lieutenant, um, you can kind of like attack and block at will because of always watching all your creatures at Vigilance. So Dromoka's Command can bust up your opponent's always watchings, uh, make your Night of the White Orchids larger, eat, eat and just by like fighting their creatures. I mean, obviously we all know Dromoka's Command's awesome. It has sure. tons of modes, does a variety of different things, but it's, it's good in particular in the Human's Mirror. Mm -hmm. So you got the green cards. Let's talk about these because this is what makes the archetypes different mm -hmm. right now. Now we saw Duskwatch recruiter do a ton of work in Jim Davis's winning deck. He yes. has a band company deck. Didn't quite see it in the humans decks, but you have it here along with Tireless Tracker and of course Dim Protector, just the value machine that he Incidentally, is. Incidentally, is a human. Mm -hmm. um, Duskwatch recruiter, I, I think, yeah, so it was. it's awesome in uh, Jim's band company deck because you can kind of like pass, flip it into a werewolf, uh, leave up Bounding Crisis, leave up Collected Company, Avacyn. But I think it's, obviously, you know, we're super early into the Shadows Over Innistrad standard format, but People probably just don't realize that this card is just insanely powerful. Mm -hmm. um, anytime that you draw this on like turn six or seven, it immediately spits out another card into your hand. Um, if you draw it in like the real late games, especially in top deck wars, you can draw upwards of four, five, six cards off of it just immediately. And that's just huge implications from a two drop. And it's also just a two mana two two that happens to be a human. So, you know, it works well in the deck naturally. Yeah, combo. Yeah. With <laughs> Subtype <Lieutenant>. plus, <laughs> plus creature combo. All right. And we saw Tireless Tracker just do a lot of work uh, in the Green White Humans deck last week. Just when you go long, you yep. just get to draw all the extra cards, combine that with the Dustwatch Recruiter. You're just doing so much more late game than some of the other sleeker builds. In exactly. Deck. I'm a little bit slower in general, but against most decks, I'm still going to be you know fairly aggressive and, and hard to manage. Um, but I just have tons of redundant uh, grindy elements. Dustwatch Recruiter, you, you just touched on, Tyler's Tracker and Dim Protector. Uh, but Bygone Bishop yep. is actually a card that I haven't really seen anybody play with, and I think it's also extremely underrated. Right, that's where I was going next, because instead of having a bunch of copies of the Tracker, mm -hmm. you have some Bygone Bishop, which kind of does the same thing, uh, but in similar, a different way. Similar, similar, yes. Um, so as I mentioned before, especially in the Human's Mirror, sizing is so important right now. And the fact, and I guess this is actually it's not in my deck, but this is a segue into the fact that why <laughs> Sylvan Advocate is so good in Bant Company. Mm -hmm. It's just a 2-3 creature uh, is able to brick wall tons of the humans naturally. Um, and the fact that Bygone Bishop is a 2-3 flyer means that if you have always watching him play or you're able to put a uh, counter on it with Jamoka's Command, you can invalidate basically all of your opponent's creatures. Um, and then you can just play your one-drops and spit out tons of clues and mm -hmm. just go long and grind them out. Right. 
Declaration Stone, we of course see this in every deck that can have white mana at this point. Best removal spell in the yeah. format, play four. Always watching, let you guys attack. But the sideboard here, you, when you see the white green deck, I expect Collected Company to be in the main deck. But a lot of the sure. players that have this type of build are not choosing to do it. They have it in the sideboard. Mm -hmm. uh, tell us why it's in the sideboard along with cards like Avacyn and Gideon. So as I alluded to, um, against these like interactive decks that are probably going to be bringing lots of sweepers, I want ways to go over the top of them effectively. Um, especially if I am interested in boarding out something like Always Watching or some of my removal spells. I have four commands and four stones. So it's a lot of removal uh, in matchups where maybe that's like not that valuable against like Esper Dragons or other language control decks, things along those lines. Um, I want to be able to swap those out just for more durability and redundant ways to flood the board and make it hard for my opponent to be able to trade for, with me effectively. So I can like bring in like this little kind of flash package somewhere to Bant Company where I have Archangel Avacyn Collected Company. Um, I have two Nissas on my sideboard and a Forest uh, to up my land count mm -hmm. and support those to kind of work towards bridging to the fours and fives. And then also uh, in the mirror matches, I'm interested in going a little bit bigger, uh, not only in the you know the card advantage suite, I want to lock up the ground, draw a bunch of cards, but then I just want to get to five mana and cast Tragic Arrogance. Right. We saw this out of the Roanoke deck last week, the White mm -hmm. Black Eldrazi deck. You know, the only real chance everyone said was to beat the humans deck was to cast Tragic Arrogance. Yeah. So I can imagine it's pretty good here it's, as it's, well. It is great, yeah. When you can leave yourself with just a bygone bishop or what have you and it, it even comes up where you you like declaration and stone a bunch of their creatures early on and they have a bunch of clues laying around because they want to empty out their hand so you tragic air against them and leave them with only one clue it's a pretty funny interaction but it does come up occasionally yeah leaving a clue behind is always pretty funny yeah. after tragic arrogance resolves uh let's talk about westvale abbey how many in your deck and Goose egg. Right, so that's important. Zero, but we see it in some of these other decks. You know, Mono White can only put in one or two. Right. Other people are trying to force a Green White token strategy with more of that. Uh, why does it not deserve a place here, and where does that card really shine instead? Uh, Westvale Abbey is really interesting. It's, I think, uh, other people have touched upon this fact, but I think the threat of it is a lot scarier than the actual reality. Um, it's certainly like a card, like if I was going to play White Black Eldrazi again, I would probably play a copy or two within my 75 because it's just, it's a nice, like, grindy element. Uh, making a human every turn, I think, is a little bit underrated. Um, but uh, these white decks that we just, we're seeing and are so popular and so powerful are, are very well equipped to deal with it naturally uh, between Declaration and Stone, Reflector Mage, things along those lines. So I think it would be pretty hard for me to work towards actually uh, making a, a Ormdahl Profane yes. Prince. I was, I, was trying to, you got it. I was trying to remember what it's <laughs> actually called, but I, I got there. Well um, done doing my job for me. So like, you know, I, I could like sacrifice my board and make this giant lifelink creature, but I actually just want to keep like Bygone Bishop, Tireless Tracker, Dustwatcher Crew in play and just generate advantage that way. Yeah, it was interesting because uh, Kellen last week played the Mono White build. He had one copy in his deck, said it had him play a few times, got to the mana to use it, but said he only really wanted to activate it once. Sure. So like, it's there, but as you said, the threat of it is more important because everyone's got all the answers, whether it's clip wings, mm -hmm. Declaration Stone, Stasis Snare, all that stuff all takes care of it. Yep. So Certainly I could see, uh, you know, we hit a point in the metagame maybe halfway through the Shadows of Enerstrad standard where Westville Abbey is very powerful because maybe people aren't as prepared for it, but I think the, the hype kind of made it a little ineffectual the first week. All right. Well, you're here with White Green Humans. You got a couple of the Roanoke crew to play it this week, so yeah, wish you the best yeah, of luck. Well, tricked them. <laughs> <laughs> as far as they know. Yeah. <laughs> Mike, thanks for joining me here in the cyborg. Stay tuned it. to StarCityGames.com all weekend long for the action here in Columbus.